Hey everybody, welcome back to the second part of this week's pop-out window video where I'm working right here on my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor. As I said in the previous video, I just didn't get a chance to edit any of these videos this week. There's just so many of them, <laughs> and it was just no time that I had. I had a ton of stuff recorded, but like I said, no time to edit. So I mashed them together into two videos, the one that you saw yesterday and the one that you're seeing today. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, I don't remember where I left off, but uh, I wasn't happy with closing out the video. I felt there was more I should have done or could have done before finishing it up. But, yep, yeah, I got stuck working, and then I didn't get home until late last night. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to try to get this thing cut off and uh, finalized. And what I've decided is that where these two holes are for the screws, which normally this will go here, and then this piece would be way over here somewhere, I'm going to screw it down this way. And what this is going to do is this is going to provide a guide for me to make two new holes. And then right in the middle of those four holes, we're going to cut it off. We're going to form this into shape, bend it into there, put this then back on, screw it back in. And then using this, once again, as a guide to make new holes into this piece, I can then screw it all together. And call this side essentially done, except for the piece of glass, which I have to have made yet. No, this plexiglass is not going into production. I keep hearing that, you know, you're using such an ugly piece of glass, why don't you clean it up? I don't know why people keep saying that, I really don't. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make them look particularly bright. But anyways, uh, yeah, this is going to get replaced with a real piece of glass. Once I have this sized up the way it needs to be, I'm going to open it back up, pull this back out, take it to a local glazer, and say, make me a piece into a tempered glass, so that way I can put it in the car. And, well, essentially, then I'll be done with it. All right, here's what we're going to do today. Let's see, let's take a set of screws and some washers here and see if we can get this mounted. Make sure this is going to work the way I, I think it's going to. I'm rather surprised at these hinges. I thought they'd be a more complex mechanical device with an actual pin in them. I never looked at them this closely before. But what they are, is just a piece of spring steel. It's literally just a piece of spring steel. It's, it's just a piece of metal that bends back and forth and snaps back into its stock position. So essentially, once you release the mechanism in the back, the window will have that tendency to want to close on its own. So, kind of interesting how that works. All right, I'm going to take this out to the drill press get a couple of holes drilled in here, get them tapped, and then we'll start a set of screws in there. And I think to do that, it would probably be best that I completely remove all of these clamps. And then just go with this piece. Much lighter and easier to handle. All right, not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. There, now if only I could remember to hit the record button whenever I start working again. <laughs> anyway, I got my holes drilled as we talked about. I also cut it off at the, uh, the center section because remember there was going to be four holes, so I cut that out. I started to bend this around this edge, and I have to bring these two pieces together now. So we're in the home stretch, and this is going pretty well. Um, I was a little worried that all this part over here, which is all kinds of waggly, was going to be a piece that I was going to have to straighten, and it looks like I'm actually going to be cutting that off. Right here is actually, yeah, it's looking pretty straight. I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get an approximate marking and start sawing this mofo off. What I might even do is take the glass out and then bend these two pieces together. Right now they're interfering with each other, but if it's off the glass, I can go like this with them on top of each other, and then I can actually make a marking. So that might be a better idea, but it's bending to this contour just fine, which was another problem that I was a little worried about. But it looks like it's not going to be an issue, not like it was over here. This this was <laughs> this was hard. There's, a, there's no radius to bend it on. It's, it's, a, it's a French curve. It, it continues to change its angle as you come through it. So, yeah, something. All right. Well, I'm going to straighten this out a little bit, bend this on under. Um, 
you know, I better get more bend on it first before I take it apart because it may not fit properly when I put it back together. So what I need to do then is I need to straighten this out just a little bit. And then pull this back over here. Yeah, I messed it up a little bit. I just put a curve where I didn't want to. That's going to be a little harder to straighten out. pop this off of here and see what happens. You know, it didn't open up like I expected it to. That's a good thing. Let's see if I can stretch this just a little bit. All right, pop it all back apart here. Open this back up, pull that glass back out. Yeah, you see all that waggly. I'm glad that a lot of that's going to disappear because these two pieces are going to meet up. This is going to bend in a little bit more. They're going to meet up right about here. So I only have to straighten out a little bit of it and that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Yeah, right. I see what's coming together here. All right, I gotta take this little bend here, this little little hop, and uh, as I straighten this out to go this way, I have to bend it through this right here, and then I think the rest of it should come out and be just fine. At least that's the standing theory. <laughs> In fact, I just got a lot of it out just now. I think we're going to make our marking and start our cut. And then what I will do to finalize this bend is I will move this one out of the way and then close this up and then try to join the two together. And I'm going to leave a little excess material on in the middle because if they close tight and the glass feels loose, then I'll just shave them out a little bit and get that straight. And then once that's good, and I'll screw in my bracket which should give me my template holes over here, drill out these holes, tap them, screw it in, and it's ready to install. And we'll see how it fits properly on the vehicle. All right, I just about got this thing. Looking over here, you can see how well I did. I got that gap closed up, but there's a little bit of a hoopty right here that I need to knock out. This needs to be more straight. So that's the only, only flaw that I have. And then this gap here is a little wider on one side than it is on the other. That's really easy. I just open this up and I'll just, you know, hit it with a sander or a file or something. Doesn't need to be a big deal. But it closed nice and tightly around that glass. And uh, I am very, very satisfied with the results here. Very satisfied. I've got to drill the rest of my holes, but I'm not going to do that until I close that gap up and fix this bend. Because when I straighten out that bend, it might make this a little bit longer and I might have to sand off a little bit more of that, which is going to change the position of my holes. But yeah, just about got it. Just about got it. Both these pieces need to go in a little bit more. Yep, just a hair more. That's it. So I'm going to try to get this bend out of here. I don't know what it's going to take to do that because I have no leverage on it from this side. And if I try to bend it from the other side and I do manage to get leverage over here, it'll undo this bend or alter it somehow. And I don't want to mess with that one. That one's good. All right. Well, we're still playing with this thing a little bit. It's going to be a little bit of finagling and bending, twisting, pulling, you know, the usual stuff that I do when I'm alone. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to be back in just a couple. And I'll show you guys the end result. Well, I think that just about gets it. I knocked that little hoopty out of there. It was kind of easy. Um, I didn't expect it to be. What I ended up doing is, is I wrapped a towel around my vise about four uh, layers, 
put this in the vise right up to the spot where I wanted to bend it and then gently grabbed it over here in the in the the uh, curve here in the corner and, and bent it outwards just a little bit and that was able to get this nice and straight so I'm happy with that right here these two ends don't quite meet up because they still need just a little bit of sanding in there to make those surfaces flush so I'll hit that with the uh, sanding disc uh, real lightly real lightly it doesn't need much at all and um after that, it's just a matter of drilling out these last two holes, getting that hinge put in there, and then we get this sucker mounted. So we're getting somewhere. I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to lay this one on top of the uh, stock pop out and see how much smaller it is. <laughs> Hell, I can't wait to put it on the car. That way I can demonstrate that my motorized, uh, my motorized pop out motors are actually going to open up the window straight. Contrary to popular belief, I really can't wait to prove everybody wrong on that one. <laughs> All right, we're going to stick to what we've got here. This is looking really, really good. I see a couple little hoopties I can straighten out a little bit, stuff that's really, really minor. In fact, you may not even see it when it's on the car with the seal and everything on it. It might just disappear. But because I like everything to be as close to perfect as possible, I'm going to be making a few adjustments here and there. But overall, very satisfied. All right, I think I've made my final adjustments. I've got it sanded down so that way the gap closes up nice and clean. And uh, we're gonna see if she fits on the glass properly. One thing I never did check to see if there's any burrs on this thing, and it, there is not. That's good. Okay, glass. I've had the best experience putting in the tight corner first and up here putting in the easy corner and then this is the hard one this is the one that you got to stretch it around yeah there it is all right and our gap doesn't close uh oh did i cut it too short did the duck man screw it up let us find out this thing is tight. I mean, this thing is like uh, guitar strings. Haha! <laughs> nope. Mother f***ing perfect. There it is. You see, it's a little bit crooked, but that's not a problem. What I need to do is get a longer clamp and run at the length of the glass here and pull these pieces down together because I can press them together with my hand and they're even. So that's good. Awful lot of scratches on this frame the more I look at it. But what I will do is I will sand it down with some very, very light, um, light sandpaper and then I'll buff the living crap out of it so it's like a mirror and then we'll clear coat it. So it'll look like, uh, well, polished aluminum because that's what it is. If it's actually aluminum, I don't even know. I tried to cut it with the uh, angle grinder earlier with a cutting disc on it. And this stuff just does not want to cut. Steel will throw sparks all over the place. Uh, oh, pardon me. Will throw sparks all over the place and cut like a mofo. But this stuff, whatever it is, it, uh, it just got really, really hot. It didn't want to cut. I mean, it seems like I was just holding the damn thing on it forever. But the key to um, getting this thing flat was definitely using my uh, disc sander. I used the belt sander to uh, cut the ends of the glass, and I used the disc on the side of it to polish these suckers down to make them straight. And this looks good. This looks good. All right. I'm going to have to do for sure is I'm going to have to pull this in. And looking inside of there, it's definitely not as far in as it needs to be. And then once we've got that into where it needs to go, then I have to screw our hinge down, drill out and tap the other two holes, Put our screws together and it's ready for assembly on that car all right i wonder if i can just uh gently tap that in i wonder if it'll go i don't want to beat on it too much because the flange where the seal goes in there may not fit afterwards it's going going little by little yeah it's got like maybe a half a millimeter to go I can just feel my thumb catching when I go to one direction on here
I think that's as far as it's going to go. How's it look from the outside? Yeah, from the outside, actually, it looks pretty damn good. On a 56, I don't believe they even show these gaps. I think on a 56, they actually put a little aluminum clip over that covers the seam. If that is the case, uh, all that work I put in this seam is not going to matter anyway because I'm going to get the clip that goes over it and covers it up. So you're never going to see it anyway, which is really a damn shame. <laughs> I put a lot of time into that. But for whatever it's worth, you see there's just like a little bit of a ziggy line in there. I mean, it's just a little bit less than perfect. I mean, I, I give it a 99% grade. This is the first one of these I've ever done, and I think I did a pretty damn good job. But, um, yeah, if I can cover that with a clip, you'll never even see the, the little flaw that was in it. That's it. And if you look at the bottom of this, there is, and I noticed this when I put the, uh, the, the, when I, rather when I was cutting this, and I'm glad that I noticed it when I did. Right here, about in the bottom here, it stops being straight, and it, it goes up a little bit. There's a little bit of a hoopty, and that's actually in the body, the way the body was stamped out. So I had to accommodate for that, and I had to put a little bend in here, and you really can't even see it. I wonder if you could see it this way. Yeah, now you could see it. You see how it goes a little bit off to the left? That actually has to be there, or this glass doesn't fit in the car. And I was glad that I looked at that, otherwise, yeah, we could have had some bigger problems. <laughs> Well, I think we're good here. I'm going to do the best that I can to get this thing shaped tight. And then we're going to start drilling, tapping, and, uh, <laughs> sounds like one of my Friday nights, and um, get this thing finalized once and for all and get it installed on the car. I want this done today. I really want this done today. And that means it's going to happen in this video. So anyway, MFDM, yeah, you got it. <laughs> well, after I shut the camera off, I, I went and... Um, open the clamp up and just let this flip open. The lower piece over here, I just gave it a little bit of a bend inwards and clamped it back shut and now it's completely flush. Absolutely flush. It looks really good. It looks really, really good. I am extremely pleased with that. We're gonna go with it just like it sits. I'm gonna get these holes drilled in on the reverse side. So what I need to do is I need to get this clamp. Actually, it's not a clamp, it's a uh, hinge on the back side here aligned with where it needs to be looks like it's going to be right about there okay we'll get that tightened up we'll get the sucker drilled out and i'll be back in just a minute there's been so much stopping and going in this video that i keep forgetting to hit the record button but here we are holes are drilled and tapped and the hinge is now effectively installed and that's the last screw that just went into it. All right, should be able to release this. And we have us one complete window frame. Look at that. Yeah, that jumped out of alignment. I think I can play with that just a little bit. The glass is in there nice and snug. Of course, it's not glass, it's just a piece of test plexi. Let's go ahead and take this out to the car and see how she fits. Oh, before we get into any of that, let's do this. This is what everybody wants to see and I know what I want to see. Here's a stock pop out, 73. Here's Eleanor's pop out. <laughs> Look at that difference. That's pretty tremendous. So for people that say, you know, oh, it doesn't look like it's been chopped all that much in the back. Uh, yeah, it actually has been been changed quite a bit. Of course, 56 windows are smaller than a 73 windows. That's the equivalent of a late model window right here. But it would only differ by about like an inch and a half, two inches or something. But still, tremendous difference in size. And the windows actually got, well, they're about the same length as a 73 window, just different shape because of the change of the pillar. But this is actually longer than a 56 window. All right, let's take it out to the car and see about getting this thing mounted up. Let's see what it looks like. This is the hinge end. The hinge end is going to butt right into, into here, just like this. Now, there it is. Boom. One window installed. Of course, it's not screwed in yet. It doesn't have any of the rubber seal around it yet. Um, let's go ahead and put the rubber seal on it and make sure that everything fits properly, that I don't have to shrink this thing down a little smaller in any way. 
If I do, that would suck, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do if that's what happens. All right, well, winner. <laughs> All right. With these seals, typically you're supposed to put a little bit of lube on them. And in this case, I'm not getting fancy. I'm just gonna squish the seal into place and be done with it. Uh, looking at all the channels here, making sure I didn't mash anything up. Looks like I did put a little dent in it right here. I can fix that. Just gently pry it out. Yeah, it's dinged just a little bit over here. Probably for me tapping on it with the hammer. Being all rough and shit rather than being gentle. Going with the brute force method, which I'm notorious for. That's usually what happens when all else fails and I get really pissed off. I just start smashing things. And if they work, they work. <laughs> now what you would normally do with one of these pop-out windows is you would put your seam, which is right here. You can see where the two pieces of rubber join together where they glued them. Right here where the crack is. In this case, because this seal is too big for this window, what we're actually going to wind up doing is cutting it right at about that point. But in order to put this in, it's a, um, a T-shaped seal, and you just kind of work it into the, uh, into the groove. And this can be a real prick sometimes. Or as I said on my Instagram, a real pain in the cherries. <laughs> sometimes you could just get it started with a screwdriver like so, and then uh, work your way around. This is one of those things that's uh, it's annoying. It's very slow paced, but once you got it, you got it. This is not cooperating. Damn. This is not cooperating at all. Let me try a fatter screwdriver here. It's what I've always done these things with, is just kind of press them in with a screwdriver. You know what, now it feels like it's going in. I think I was just doing something wrong over here. Yep, that was it. It's a shame that this scruffy old seal is gonna take this much time to install because I'm not gonna keep it on here. I'm just gonna peel it off. I just wanna make sure that everything works before I commit to putting a new seal on it. Anyway, you can see I've pressed that into place here and it's in the other side hooked in the loop, so should be able to get this all together. Uh, I could run a time-lapse video on this, but this is just boring as hell and it's going to take me a while. So I'm going to spare you guys all of that kind of crap. <laughs> and we'll be back right after this is all set and ready to go. All right, we got that rubber seal stretched all the way around. And it's a bullshit seal. It's all, yeah, it's not doing what it's supposed to do because it's all kinds of flappy floppy. It's even got a hole in it down at the bottom here. But this is just to see it fit on the car. I want to see this work. And if that works, that would be wonderful. And while I was looking everything over, I looked at the um, hinge that I put on here, and I discovered that I installed it backwards. I've already turned it around since, of course, I started recording, but um, it's back the way it should be. So I'm ready to go size this thing up and uh, take it out to the car. So uh, who's with me? <laughs> Let's see this sucker fit on there. I'm really quite curious how it's all going to go together, and I think it'll probably work out just fine. But if not, it'll need some minor adjustments, and we'll get it there. It's like the hinge got a little crushed from me manipulating it here. This is really, really soft metal. I expect this to be more springy, hence the name, spring steel. All right. Well, there it is. Broom. Let's go ahead and get it on the car. Here we are back. We've got our glass right here with the frame and this awful rubber seal, which I can already tell is going to have problems fitting on here. As this seal was originally fitted to a late model car, this car has all kinds of different curves and contours and everything else, so it's, yeah, it's just not gonna fit right. Get this hinge in where it belongs. The hinge, of course, is supposed to grab the window lip on the inside, and it's not supposed to crush the seal in the process. It should just kind of slip into place. Yeah, about got it. Right about there. And then, of course, it'll be pulled closed by the motor right in the back. Now, there it is. There it is. Holy shit. Just, 
holy shit. <laughs> it looks good. It's just clipped in up front right now. Um, I'm definitely going to fix that up. The gap opened up on that too. I got to figure out what's going on there with that. If we'll get that straightened out. Maybe I have to shave a little piece off of the, the uh, plexi. Might be putting a little too much uh, pressure on it. I've also been running in and out from uh, cold weather to warm uh, outside. Right now it's uh, 95 degrees out here and I'm inside of my garage and I did not open that door. So it's probably over 100 in here right now. So I think it's probably contracted. In fact, it still feels cold like the inside, but it will probably expand and that might even close. We'll see. But this looks pretty good. The seal looks like it's going to properly seal. I don't see any weird gaps or anything. Uh, the only exceptions are is where the seal is all curling because, of course, it wasn't on this vehicle. It began to have a memory from the car that it used to be on. So this seal is crap. But the good thing is, is that it does reach all the edges the way it's supposed to. Now on the inside, I think I should be able to get those hinges screwed into place and then finally attach this motor. And then I can demonstrate by the end of this video how that motor is going to open this thing and it's not going to cause the window to do all kinds of crap like this. It's just going to open it up straight. All right. Well, here it is. Hashtag M F D M Mother Duck Man. Boom. Eleanor, good girl. Good girl you are. Well, that closed up that window hole a lot. Uh, probably closed it up as much as, let's say, an inch and a half here, inch and a half, three inches. So it made that window look a lot smaller. And that was some of the biggest criticism I got about my chop top is that the back window was entirely too big. But you see, I had a vision. And my vision was is that when I put in all these window seals and the pop-out frame and all the other stuff, that it was going to shrink these windows dramatically. And it did. And these things should all even out just fine. Now, if you look at a standard Beetle with all the windows taken out of it, the back windows also look too big. That's just, you know, that's just the way it is. <laughs> it's just the under, inside of here where the lip is at, where the window would normally seal onto. It's, it's below the, uh, the aluminum frame here. So, yeah, that definitely made the windows look a whole lot smaller. Well, I can't wait to see the car outside, but it's just too damn hot outside. Plus, my front yard smells like dead animals. I'm not going to get into that uh, too much, except that I threw out a whole bunch of old food uh, a couple days ago, and I figured the animals in the night would clean it up. Well, none of them touched it. I didn't want it. I guess they decided it was just as disgusting. Anyway, the front yard stinks like hell, so I'm not going to open that front garage door. <laughs> And I've been trying to leave the house as little as possible just because of how bad the stench is outside. Even just looking out the back door, I can see flies everywhere because they're just, yeah, it's, it's a disgusting mess. Anyway, MFDM, there we are. Look at that. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and uh, get these hinges mounted. I'm going to take you around the inside. I'm going to set up a camera on the inside so you guys can actually see me uh, drill the holes. I believe there's four or five holes where the screws are supposed to pass through for the hinges. And they actually screw into the, um, screw right into the lip here. There'll be about four or five holes that go into that correspond to the uh, holes that are in the hinges. So I'll set that up and get that going. I have to dig out my screws. I'm not sure if I even have all the screws. That could be a problem too. If I don't have all the screws, I'm going to make a run to the hardware store first, and then of course we'll go from there. Anyway, we'll be back right after this message from our sponsors. <laughs> well, I gotta admit, working inside, um, in the air conditioning sure beats this crap. <laughs> Wow, this wasn't even in the forecast today. But yeah, that's Florida for you. Boy, is it coming down. We actually had some kind of weather alert statement that popped up. I see the garbage man finally came too. Which means whatever trash that was stinking is gone now. However, some of the food is still out in the front yard here, but I think the rain um, is going to put the stink out. Ew. Now, some of it's still down there. <laughs> I can see all the maggotoids squirming around. Yuck. 
Well, I'm here in Fire Department Rescue. Somebody either just had a tremendous wreck or lightning just hit somebody's house. I don't wish for either on anybody, but hey, it happens. All right. Well, we're going to let this slow down a little bit, and i got to get over to the hardware store for some screws, because I realize all the hinge screws are missing. So I need to get a set. Back in a little bit. All right, I got in here and drilled out these holes for the hinge. I got the screws put into place, and this uh, thing now opens and closes properly. I demonstrate it, but I have no way to grab it on the outside here. <laughs> I've also got the power motor over on the other side hooked up, but there's an enormous gap between the motor and the glass. It's a good thing I made that motor adjustable. What I need to do is uh, pivot it a little bit so that way it turns more towards the glass. I know it's kind of dark in here, but that's about the best I can do right now. Um, that's going to be something for tomorrow's video. So tomorrow we're going to try to get that motor set up so that way it works properly and it should open that glass straight, unlike how it opened it before. Okay, and before we sign off, I just want to demonstrate the motor opening it up one time. There is an enormous gap in it and it's, it's not tight as it needs to be, but uh, you guys are about to see how it does work. So, here we go. There it is, opened up straight. And it should close straight too. Well, if I hook up the battery correctly, it should close straight. Let's try again. There it is. Now, as you saw, that bolt was going all in and out. There's just a really big gap. Probably about a, oh, about a quarter of an inch on this side, and on the inside, almost an entire inch. And I just can't tighten that down anymore without either um, putting too much stress on the glass or putting too much stress on the motor the way it's mounted. I'm going to have to get the car completely out of the garage in order for me to get my body inside of here to be able to adjust the motor that lives on the inside of this. So that's interesting. I can tap the inside of the box. I guess right here I probably should drill a little hole and put a weld so that way it, uh, it doesn't do that. <laughs> Talk about a flush mounted box. Yeah, it's flush to the outer skin. I don't think it'll cause me any problems. But anyway, we are going to fix that now that I've noticed it. Yeah, I can't believe it. Just deflects enough to tap that box. It's only in that one spot. So anyways, like, comment, subscribe. Pluck that dingle belly so you guys get updates every time that I upload a video. Tomorrow we're going to work on this motor, get that thing finalized, or at least get it set in the... Uh, appropriate fashion so that way it fits flush like it's supposed to. Once that's done, I think we can call this pop-out window on this side finished. Then I can move over to the other side and get that one done. Now that I've done this one, I think the other side is going to be a whole lot easier. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.